What's going on everyone? Middleblade427 here and I present to you Kingdom Hearts 1.5 Final Mix Remix. In the last episode, we finished up virtually everything. We have one task left before us and that would be here in Hollow Bastion. This is an exclusive boss to Final Mix. You're only going to be able to fight him here. And this boss actually ties in to the entire Kingdom Hearts storyline. And I don't just mean this first one. I mean all the way through like dream drop distance and everything along that way. And that's kind of like you have to play through these games in order to understand the story. Well, it's hard to understand the storyline. Don't get me wrong. But that's where the boss in Hollow Bastion kind of comes into play and why he is here and what explains him and things along that ways. But otherwise that, we have done everything else. I've beaten all the other bosses. I am level 100. I've collected all the puppies, all the trinities, all the weapons, all kinds of good stuff. So let's just jump right into this den, shall we? We will warp from the Colosseum to Hollow Bastion and make our way to this, uh, this boss. Now, I have to tell you, I may be level 100, but this boss is still a pain in the butt. He can still kill you, no problem, even at level 100. We are heading to the Castle Chapel. Uh, the Chapel, oh my god. The castle Chapel right now. Um, this is where all the, uh, the princesses are and everything along that ways. So, yeah. This boss can still wreck your world even at level 100. You can be the most prepared you ever could possibly be, and he can still beat the crap out of you without you even knowing it, mainly because of a few moves that he does, or just because he's shining so many lights in your face that you just get disoriented and whatnot. But here we go, we have this pink or purple, whatever color orb sphere that has appeared. This is what we followed Maleficent into uh, when we fought her way, way several episodes, many, many episodes ago. Um, it's reappeared. And now when we walk through it, we will actually have to confront a new guy in there. But beforehand, we need to go through and make sure we are all prepared. Uh, magic is pretty much exactly the same. Thunder, arrow, and cure. Make sure to throw up that arrow. Use the cure. Don the Goofy are all set. Pretty much the same way I've had them for the last few episodes. Uh, Ability-wise, do what you gotta do in order to use as much AP as possible. Put it on Donald, put it on Goofy, get like the main heal yourself, heal your magic and all that stuff out of the way. But as far as Sora goes, again, put on like Combo Master and whatnot, but I am taking a few things off and putting on Strike Raid. Strike Raid really helps because just like with the Sephiroth uh, battle, you are temporarily invincible while you're throwing the Keyblade. And it's a pretty strong attack, plus the range is really nice too. So make sure you have that. Items are pretty much the same. All EXP items are gone because I'm level 100, and anything that raises the best stats for that character are put on immediately. I kind of wish Sora had four accessories, but that's okay. Item-wise, Sora gets Ethers and uh, Elixirs, but I think in this particular battle, I'm going to give Donald and Goofy a bunch of items as well. Usually I don't do stuff like this, but we're coming to the end of the game. I have so many items in my stock as is, and quite frankly, these items will help in the long run should any of them not have, you know, enough magic to cast Cure or anything like that. It's nice for them to be able to throw up a Mega Ether or Mega Potion or things along that way. So you guys can take a few of these, use them as you see fit. I trust your judgment. And if you guys have anything left over at the end of it, whoopee. If not, then I know that you'll use them for the cause of me winning, basically. That's, that's the end goal now, isn't it? So, all right. We're all set. We're all together. Everyone's level 100. We are set to do this. Okay, here we go. Through the portal and into the unknown. I remember this room. This is where we fought Dragon Maleficent. Ah, uh, memories. Oh, hello there. You seem a little, uh, unstable, buddy. Oh, loud and words and things and stuff in front of my face. What's going on? What the? Who are you? It sounded familiar, Sora. Did you say that earlier in the game? Ah, it seems you are special, too. I am Sam? I know you've said that before, Goofy. Name. Rings familiar. Oh, that's cool. You remind me of him. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, I know you've said that earlier in the game. Um, Sora? 
Oh, blocked. Very good. Taking it like a champ there, buddy. And push! Good reflect. It means you are not whole. I love the way Sora looks there. He just looks so cool with the face on him and everything. You are incomplete. Which is true. That's true. At this point in the story, Sora is technically, quote, incomplete. And now we have this weird fella basically challenging us to a fight so he can test our strength. Why? Why do you need to test our strength? What is so special about our strength that you need to test? Oh, well, whatever. Come on, guys. Let's do this. Take him down like we have everyone else. This guy is the unknown mysterious figure. He is a mysterious figure who appeared in Hollow Bastion. That is literally the entire journal entry, nothing else. 1,500 HP will give you a 12,000 experience when you beat him. Unknown has a lot of flashy attacks to him, specifically that lightsaber that he has in his hand that he's running around swinging at you and whatnot. This is probably his worst move, where he locks you inside of this, like, sphere, and your commands start changing from release to shock and back and forth. The idea behind that is to hit the X button on one of them that says release. Doing that will pop you out of uh, the spell, and you'll be able to fight again. Every time you hit shock, Sora will take damage, and Unknown will continue to beat you down with all of his flashy, seizure-rific type attacks. He has so many long-range attacks, and now he's using two lightsabers because he's a jerk, and he is just crazy. He is fast, he is strong, and even at level 100, he has the means to take down your entire party in a few swings. Keep Arrow up, keep Cure going, and quite honestly, you might as well give everybody items because as long as they're using something to keep themselves alive, then they're there to help you and to kind of draw his attention away from you, at least for a little bit, for you to be able to recollect yourself and go in for a combo or do Strike Raid or something along that way. Unknown is actually a piece of the main villain in Kingdom Hearts. To put it as simply as I can without giving anything away, the main villain broke himself up into different parts. They all have like sentience, they're all alive, but they're all part of the main person. And he has sent them through various time portals in order to influence events that leads up to the future that he is hoping for. And apparently Sora, uh, Kairi, and Riku are the chosen ones that are sent to stop him and his plans and all that other stuff. These are things that have come along as Kingdom Hearts storyline has progressed throughout the games, and it is extremely weird, extremely complicated, and it's hard to really uh, get an idea of what's going on. There's, there's a lot of loopholes in it as well. But we are almost done beating Unknown. He only has a few more hits left, and there we go. I almost had a seizure right there because that was just crazy amount of lights, but we did it. Awesome. Very good. That 12,000 experience has gone to waste, but that's okay. No big deal. If you needed it, you got it. Perfect. Now what are you going to do? Oh, okay. All right. All right. That, that's a pretty good thing to do. Um... Impressive. Most impressive. Uh. This will be enjoyable. Will it now? What are you talking about? All right, Sora. That's enough of reusing sound clips from earlier in the game. It is beyond your comprehension. For now, almost forever, based off of the way that this storyline goes. Until we meet again. Wait, what are you- Alright, fine, that's the last one you get. <gasps> I am. He is what? What are you? But a mere shell. Okay, that explains everything. Awesome. For beating unknown. You obtain the EXP necklace, which is completely pointless for me right now. And Ansem's Report 13, the final report in the entire series of it all. Oh boy, so there you go. All right, so we beat Unknown. That, that wasn't so 
bad, per se. I'm looking around. I don't think there's any holes in the ceiling. I have to sort of reflect that thing, but I don't know how this place looked before. That wasn't so, so bad. I mean, yeah, when I tried to do a practice run of this, I did die, even though I'm level 100. But, you know, you kind of do the same thing you did with Sephiroth. You stay on the offensive as much as you can, and whenever uh, he does that shock release thing, just pay attention. EXP necklace increases experience obtained by 30% and slightly raises max AP. So now we have all four pieces of EXP gain. Necklace and bracelets do 30, earring and ring do 20. So with all four of these, you can have a massive EXP boost. Go fight the Rock, rock Titan again, get the level 100 because you can. We have an earring, we have a ring, necklace and bracelet. We're all decked out in very pretty things. In addition to that, the journal is complete. Look at all the Mickey heads. We have Mickey heads all over the place. Here's the last one in the character section. It's unknown. I told you that was all it was, but uh, all the Mickey heads. We have Mickey heads there. We have Mickey heads here. And some report. We have all the Mickey heads. Everything is done. And even on the main screen, there is a Mickey head. That is 100% complete, guys. That is awesome. That is like the big thing that I was striving for, for this entire LP to 100% complete the Jiminy Journal. What am I going to do now? Well, I have two things that are going to happen. For the remainder of this episode, I am actually going to read through the Ansem reports one by one. This is going to be story time with Metal Blade 427. Stick around, uh, listen to the reports. There's a lot of interesting things in it, a lot of backstory per se about things like the Heartless and Ansem and all kinds of cool stuff like that. So by all means, hang around, uh, listen to all the reports and, you know, learn a little bit more about it. If you don't want to do that, then I thank you for watching. Please rate and comment down below. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button so you can get equipped with me, Metal Blade 427. In the next episode, I head back to the final rest and the end game begins. We need to walk through the door and then be able to go take down Ansem, figure out what his plans are, and stop them because we're heroes and that is exactly what we do. So, hang out, listen to me tell you the story of Ansem, or I will see you in the next one. Your choice, but in either case, you guys have a good one, and I will catch you all later. Unless you're hanging around for the story, in which case, hold tight, it begins now. Much of my life has been dedicated to the pursuit of knowledge. That knowledge has guarded this world well. Not a soul doubts that. I am blessed with my people's smiles and respect. But though I am called the Sage, there are things I do not understand. I believe darkness sleeps in every heart. No matter how pure, given the chance, the smallest drop can spread and swallow the heart. I have witnessed it many times. Darkness darkness of the heart. How is it born? How does it come to affect us so? As ruler of this world, I must find the answers. I must find them before the world is lost to those taken by the darkness. It is my duty to expose what this darkness really is. I shall conduct the following experiments. Extract the darkness from a person's heart. Cultivate darkness in a pure heart. Both suppress and amplify the darkness within. The experiments caused the test subject's heart to collapse, including those of the most stalwart. How fragile our hearts are. My treatments produced no signs of recovery I confined those who had completely lost their hearts beneath the castle. Some time later, I went below and was greeted by the strangest sight, creatures that seemed born of darkness. What are they? Are they truly sentient beings? Could they be the shadows of those who lost their hearts in my experiments? The shadows that crawl beneath the castle. Are they the people who lost their hearts, or incarnations of darkness, or something entirely beyond imagination? All my knowledge has provided no answer. One thing I am sure of is that they are entirely devoid of emotion. Perhaps further study will unlock the mysteries of the heart. Fortunately, there is no shortage of test samples. 
They are multiplying underground even as I write this report. They still need a name. Those who lack hearts. I will call them the Heartless. The Heartless appear in groups and are multiplying rapidly. I've provided them both living and non-living samples. They're responsive only to the living. They seem to multiply after absorbing something from the living creature. Their prey vanishes without a trace. I believe the Heartless are taking hearts. They are born from those who've lost their heart and thrive on hearts seized from others. The hearts taken by the Heartless become Heartless themselves. Though I lack proof, I am confident in this hypothesis. I must also study their behavioral principles. Though they lack emotion, they do seem to have some intelligence. How to communicate with them? It just occurred to me, could they be the darkness in people's hearts? To study heartless behavior, I picked one out for observation. It wiggled its antenna and, as if sensing a target, headed deep into the castle. In the deepest parts of the castle, its antenna began vibrating, as if searching for something. Suddenly, a strange door appeared. I'd never known of its existence. It had a large keyhole, but didn't seem to be locked. So I opened the door. What I saw on the other side mystified me. What was that powerful mass of energy? That night, I observed a great meteor shower in the sky. Could it be related to the door that I have opened? A massive core of energy lay beyond the door sought by the Heartless. It may well be the ultimate goal of all Heartless. But what is that energy? I have devised a hypothesis based upon my observations of the Heartless. The Heartless feed on others' hearts, and they yearn for that energy core. That thing beyond the door must be a heart too, the heart of this world. There is no proof, but having felt that immense energy, I am certain that was the heart of the world. The Heartless are trying to take hearts not only from all living creatures, but from the world itself. But what do they mean to do with the hearts of the world? I am now studying material from the meteor that rained down that fateful night. What a find! The material is foreign to our world. It is elastic to the touch, and when two pieces are combined, they bond easily. None of the records I've scorned even mention such a substance. Was it introduced to this world when I opened that door? I wonder how many other such materials drift through the atmosphere of this tiny world. I wish I could soar off and find out. Could there be uncharted worlds up there? My curiosity never ceases to grow, but I should stop speaking of such unrealistic dreams. For now, there is no way to venture outside the world. My people and I are all but prisoners of this tiny planet. There is no doubt that the Heartless are deeply connected to people's hearts. Further study may unravel both their motivations and the mysteries shrouding the heart. As a start, I have built a device that artificially creates Heartless. By recreating the conditions that spawn the Heartless naturally, I should be able to produce them artificially. 
This device is the culmination of all my research thus far. The machine's test run successfully created a heartless. This may be a step towards creating a heart from nothing. The artificially and naturally created heartless show nearly identical traits, but the two types should remain distinct for the purpose of this experiment. So I will mark the ones that are created artificially. Simply astonishing, today I had a guest from another world. He is a king, and his vessel is built on the material that composed the meteors. He called the pieces gummy blocks. It seems that my opening that door has opened the path to interworld travel. We talked for countless hours, but one story in particular caught my interest. That of a key called the Keyblade. The Keyblade is said to hold phenomenal power. One legend says its wielders, wielders saved the world, while another says that he wrought chaos and ruin upon it. I must know what this Keyblade is. A key opens doors. It must be connected to the door that I have opened. Just as people have hearts, so do worlds. The same can be said of the stars in the night sky, and deep within each world lies a door to its heart. The heartless desire those hearts, born out of the darkness in people's hearts. They seek to return to a greater heart. Yes, that's it. The heartless come from people's hearts, as does the darkness. Is the core of the world's heart the world of the heartless? I will pursue the answer there and become all-knowing. My path is set. I shall seek out the wielder of the Keyblade and the princesses. My body is too frail for such a journey, but I must do this. I will cast it off and plunge into the depths of darkness. Opening the door to the world's heart caused its walls to crumble. These fragments are seen as shooting stars. This explains why these gummy blocks can travel freely to other worlds. I have known the catalyst of this collapse, the appearance of the Heartless. However, it will take time to search out the world's doors and to retrieve each heart. Furthermore, the doors can be locked using a keyblade, making the heart forever unattainable. I must take action before the wielder of this key appears in this world. If the princesses and the Keyblade are connected, they should resonate. I've chosen a girl. I don't know if she holds the princess's power, but I will find out. She may lead me to the key bearer. I shall set her free and observe. The body is gone. The heart should have returned to the heartless, and yet, nothing. This one is unlike any other. Its memories remain, and it has yet to take the form of a heartless. A close eye must be kept on the situation. Much is still unknown. To get through the realm of darkness, one must go through the doors of Kingdom Hearts place where the world's heart connect. Beyond this world is a place in which darkness reigns. Details shall be archived in a separate report. There are many worlds in existence, some of which we know nothing about. The world in which we live, 
the realm of darkness, the realm of light, and the world in between. Wherein lies true nirvana. Where does the body go when it separates from the heart? If the soul remains within the body, is it still considered to be deceased? When the heart returns to the heartless, the physical form disappears. But that is merely true in this world. Perhaps the body exists in... Another form in another world. If that is the case, then it is possible for one to exist in two worlds. A being that is neither darkness nor light, belonging nowhere, abandoned by its heart, a mere shell of its former self. The relationship between the heart and the body is complex. However, I am certain that if yourself exists here, then by definition, the other cannot truly exist. The other, the one which does not exist, shall be dubbed nobody. <laughs>